Welcome to my little video on AMCAP, and I'm going to refer to it as AMCAP software for your digital microscope. These have been out here for several years now, and with the bracket provided, they're kind of a little bit of a joke as far as using one, but with proper matting techniques and proper adjustment techniques, these can be a very, very useful tool. I bought mine specifically for working with electronics, specifically PC boards, especially surface mount technology, for checking solders and making sure I didn't have any problems when I repaired the board. The one I have is a USB only version, and I'm quite impressed with it now that I've got a couple good mounts for it. And the mounts are not the subject of this video, I'll get into those in another video, but suffice to say, I think this thing could be equal to what was. Just a few years ago, several thousand dollars in equipment, and it's only 25 bucks off eBay. But let's get into the software. There are at least five different installable programs for your digital microscope. One of those comes with Windows 10. The other are four are available on a free download basis, and I'll list the download locations in the description, and you can download them there. This video only addresses AMCAP, and I'll address the other versions of software in another video. There are wireless digital microscopes, and they are USB-only digital microscopes. I only have the USB version, so I won't be addressing it from the wireless standpoint in this video. This video specifically covers AMCAP version 9.016. If any of you know of a newer version that has come out, please do post it in the comments. We'd all like to know about it. Now, from my experimenting around, the software will load and run from XP onward, but the driver is only workable from Windows 7 onward. You will lose some functionality with the software if you don't have Windows 7 and onward and the provided driver installed. Windows will default to its own driver, and that will give you functionality, but not full functionality. Okay, time to look at installing the driver. If you're installing this from a provided CD, you want to go to the drivers folder and run setup.exe. This will install AMCAP. It will not necessarily install the driver. We're going to look at that separately. If you're installing AMCAP from a download, you'll download the AMCAP.zip file and you want to expand this on a location where you can store the file contents permanently on your hard drive. Once you have unzipped the file, go to that folder and run that same setup.exe file. Note that the driver is circled above. This is the driver you will be installing. For Windows 7 users, now go back to your main menu and go to Control Panel. Now go to Device Manager. Look down and see if you see an Imaging Devices listing. Click on that one. You should see this. If you do see this, you're done. You need to proceed no further. If you don't see this, you still need to install the driver. Now, if you Windows 10 users, go to Settings, go to the search box, type in Control Panel, and then click on the Control Panel result. Then go to Hardware and Sound, click on Devices and Printers. You should now see your USB camera showing up, and you want to double click on that, and that'll take you to the next one. Now you want to click on Hardware. You should see your device in this list. It should have a GL in front of it if the driver's installed correctly. If it doesn't, you want to double click on this. All users should merge from this point and now we're going to install the driver, at least make sure it's the correct driver. Click on driver in the top row. Now if you're not seeing that GL prefix, you want to now click on update driver. Browse my computer for driver software. Here you should see the correct folder where the driver is located. If not, you want to go ahead and browse to move to that correct folder. Once you get to the correct folder, click next. The computer should now go off and update the driver, and when it comes back, you should be looking at the correct driver with that GL prefix in front of it. Now you should have the driver installed, but just to be sure, click on driver details and make sure this is what you're looking at. Okay, and here comes the fair warning as part of the program. Windows will tend to drop this driver, especially if you have a laptop you're using with a webcam built in, or you're using another camera like a Logitech. Be sure you have the folder handy so you can reinstall this driver. I suggest leaving it on your computer at a place you can find very easily. Now, finally, I'm sure someone just said, let's take a look at the actual software. The icons are take a picture, 
start a recording, stop a recording, preview, which gives you a black screen of what the camera is actually seeing, full screen, video capture filter, and video capture properties. Okay, now I'm going to go back and break it all down. Under file, we have set capture file and allocate file space. Both of these are pretty important. The allocate file space is very important. We'll get to that later on. Near as I've been able to tell, the software wants you to find where you want to save your video file and give it a name file to save to. What I've been doing is just going ahead and saving it to desktop and then calling it test.avi after I rename a text file I created. Kind of a quirky software issue, but it works. And if you find a better way, again, post it in the comments. I'll be glad to hear from anybody that can find a better way of doing this. Under set file size, you can set the limit of the video file you want to create. Do not forget this is here. Okay, if you're a Windows Vista or earlier user, this doesn't mean anything to you, but if you're a Windows 7 or later, make sure your devices show this with that GL prefix in front of your camera. Now, here's a little piece of good news. This software will work with your Logitech webcam. You won't have all the functionality of the Logitech software, but it will record videos. Next on the positive is you can definitely record audio into your videos as you're making them with your digital microscope. Now, as a reminder, before we proceed, if you see this in your devices, your driver isn't installed correctly or you're using a version that's not supported with the driver. You're only going to be able to record 640 by 480, nothing bigger. Okay, under options, we've got two very useful features there, flip and mirror. If your camera's upside down or your source material is upside down, these will allow you to correct it just by clicking these. Now, let's look at video properties. First thing it glares back at you is video standard, none. Next thing it glares back at you, color space and correction. This is all you get. Y, U, Y, 2. Output size. Again, Vista or earlier, 640 by 480 is all you get. Note, compression, grayed out. There is no video compression on this recording stream. The files can become humongous in just a few minutes. Under output size or resolution, if your maximum size is with the driver are 1920 by 1080 or 1600 by 1200, you won't be able to get any more with a 2 megapixel camera. Now we're going to do a few features, Windows 7 and later with the correct driver. The first one is this zoom screen. You can digital zoom with this. You can digital pan with this. Obviously the pan is pretty limited. The center button on the pan basically cancels the zoom and returns the camera to its original position. Under special effect, I don't think any of this really applies to these digital microscopes. One thing you might want to do is make sure your power line frequency is set to 60 hertz to avoid flicker. The video processing amp screen does work. You can change all your camera's parameters that are shown here. The camera control screen, if it does appear, does not work. Now for me in Windows 7, I found out the snapshot size was independent of the driver. You could set high definition snapshots up to the limits of the camera. In this case, again, 1920 by 1080 or 1600 by 1200. Again, those will be your maximum sizes with a 2 megapixel camera. And lastly, here's the one for sure bug still in the software. When you take a snapshot, occasionally the software locks up on you, and here's what you get for a screen. You can still play around and get it to continue, but really you just have to reboot the software and start again. Well, yeah, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, consider giving me a like and definitely consider subscribing. I just might have a few other things here coming down real soon you're going to see. I definitely got some more digital microscope videos on the way. So, until I pass cross again, y'all take care now. Yeah, and we'll be in touch.